Good afternoon, it's Trey again with BuildIdaho.com. Hey, I've had so many comments about the Eric Evans home. I decided that I better get back here and get some more details about this home. So we're going to check out the home again a little bit more today and get some of the finer details. So stick around. Okay, Eric, thanks for having me back in. I've had lots of people asking me questions about this home, and I know you've had lots of people touring. So I thought today if I could ask you some of the details of this home. Um, so I'll, I want to walk through and just kind of point out some of the bigger elements. But the first one to me, of course, is the doors. If you've got a cheap door, I just can't stand it. So this big, beautiful door. Tell me about the door. Well, your front doors are a focal point of any entryway. And one of the first mistakes you can make in building a custom home is not inviting your guests in. So what we did here is we came up with a large opening. We have two 3080 doors. They're solid wood doors, they're not alder, and uh, they've got this plank with the country arch in them to kind of go with the whole motif that, we, that we've picked out here. These are locally built, they're built over at uh, Design Innovations, which is owned by Franklin Building Supply, it's a division of, uh, at their door shop. So we kind of incorporated that as the entryway feel to draw you into this... Uh, heck of a start. Yeah, yeah, it's a heck of a start. Let's, uh, so just as long as we're at the front door, um, as, a, as a focal point, we've got a couple more features here. For one, we've got a beautiful floor with the horseshoe, which we discussed last time, and uh, these big, beautiful pieces of wood that you've done a great job with. So tell me, uh, and, and actually uh, one of your prospective clients was just in here and talking about the floor. So where did flooring come from? Well, again, flooring came from Design Innovations. They, they did a wonderful job for me. Um, okay, Eric, I'm in the kitchen now, and one of the... We didn't, discuss this in the, we didn't discuss this in the last piece, but all the beams are just a huge function, not functional, but... Um, Focal point. Okay, Eric, this is the kitchen, and uh, tell me a little bit about the granite. How did you select it, and tell me about what it is. Well, this is, this is three centimeters thick. It's called Exodus. It's your typical level four, level five granite. Um, which, what does level four, level five mean? Well, just briefly. We've got we got levels one through five. It means it's at the top of the scale. Okay, that's it all means I want to know. That um, due to it, it's the area that it's brought out from, due to the um, the material it's made from, it's harder to work with, and it's got more movement, more color. It's worth more. Tell me, what is the name of this specific? Exodus. Exodus. All right, good. Eric, we're in the kitchen, and I wanted to briefly ask you, the client chose Bosch. That's correct. Which are really cool, but tell me why. Well, consumer reports. Okay. So, a lot of my customers these days are interested in longevity. And Bosch is, is uh, world renowned for high quality, and consumer reports reported that, and they came to the table wanting Bosch appliances. All right, let's head downstairs. We're on the deck, and uh, the deck's got kind of something that I never realized. So let's take a uh, this old house moment and discuss how the deck is built and what's the benefit. Well, in particular, what you're what we're referring to here is running our our decking, our planks, our redwood decking at a diagonal, at a perfect 45, if you will. And the reason we do that is much more than just cosmetic. It does look pretty to do it this way. Yeah. But the reason that we do it is we're trying to accomplish a structural integrity. So we have a beam that's holding up the floor joists, and we'll point that out when we go down below. Um, it's also holding up structural columns that are holding up beams that are holding up the roof. Okay, so this, this scenario becomes really important. Um, I don't know if you've seen the videos where the people fall and the whole deck falls, but we're trying to avoid that. Nice. So when we go diagonal, what we do is we tie off what we call the diaphragm, which is the decking from the beam all the way back to the house, and we do it every 16 inches on a joist. You, know, you act like you're a builder. I've done a few of these. <laughs> um, done a few of them. All right, good. Let's talk about over the, over the side here. One of the uh, client requests was a flat backyard, and I don't know if my video camera picks this up, but well, uh, it, we've got a retaining we could, wall. As flat as we could make it, um, because the original house was uh, on a hillside, and he was mowing um, at a 45 degree angle. Yeah, so, not fun. Um, so what we did is we did a retaining wall in the back. Um, we brought uh, the back patio down with steps, um, and we can show you that at the bottom as well. Let's go take a look at the bottom floor. 
Okay, Eric, we're outside. Let's walk through the underneath of the porch okay. here. What I wanted to show you was the relief cuts in the bottom of our decking. And if you'll notice, each board, each 2x6, has three relief cuts. That keeps the boards from cupping or twisting. The other uh, um, advantage to doing the deck the way we do it is the way we lag in our, our uh, ledger board into the rim board from behind, um, which basically guarantees for the deck to fail, the hardware's got to fail. All right. Interesting. Okay, Eric, we're in the master bedroom downstairs. My first question that you've received just, I'm probably hundreds, I've gotten dozens personally, but um, painting is just phenomenal. And I, we've, already, we've already talked about the, um, the painter. So I want to know, if I was going to do this, what would I budget? Well, first of all, uh, you're looking at about $1,500 in faux paint alone. Just in this room? Just in this room. So what you're looking at is about 20 man hours of work in this room in faux paint. Wow. So, uh, and it's a, it's a custom leather looking finish. It all starts with the drywall. The drywall didn't cost any more than normal uh, Sun Valley texture or hand texture, but it has to be done in the appropriate fashion so it looks like leather. Yeah. Let's discuss some of these buttons you've got here. All right. What we got here is we have one of their alarm system keypads. For all of you that need to know, we are fully alarmed and ready to go. Um, what we have here is we have uh, one of three keypads. One's in the master down, one's the master up, one's in the laundry room. This is how you arm the house if you're staying. This is how you arm the house if you're leaving. What we have here is our, is our Breathe Audio system. It's got five different inputs. It's one of six zones in the house. Um, I can play different music in different zones. Um, and uh, I can control the system from that touch panel. Interesting. Let's head in the bathroom. Okay. Okay, Eric, so the master bathroom, deep, yeah. deep and rich. Deep and rich. How, well, how, master. Let's, master. Let's discuss how we get there. Master bedroom, master bathroom. All of the old school designers will tell you master means masculine. So to properly do a master bedroom, in my humble opinion, you got to go masculine, and that's deep, dark, manly. Big. So what we got here. Go big or go home. Go big or go home. Um, what we got here is a is a beautifully laid slate floor, and again, this was provided by Design Innovations. It's laid in what we call a random pattern, which means it never repeats itself. Okay, so the trick there is to on purpose not repeat yourself. So we have you know different sized tiles going in different directions in order to achieve this look. Um, you might want to get a shot of that master shower. It's, it's pretty impressive as well. And what I'd like to do, Trey, is invite you and the folks out to Design Innovations to see where we got the inspiration for this floor. Because when my customer walked into their showroom, this was the floor in the entryway, and she said, I've got to have it. And uh, bless their hearts, they came up with a way to make sure she could have it. As a uh, builder, any tricks here that, uh, that someone should be aware of if they wanted to recreate this? Yeah, they gotta give me a phone call. <laughs> okay, let's say they don't want to talk to you. <laughs> well, it's you know this isn't this isn't rocket science. This is uh, using different patterns, same color palettes to blend together to come uh, to make this the master. The master. 